It's a nice day out today and I am processing vinyl and thought I might show you a little bit about how that's done. Uh, I buy my vinyls online and I get them four at a time. They are six feet by nine feet and they're vertical. These are the kind, they're, they're not really the highway billboard vinyls. These are more the kind that you would see in a big city like in Times Square. Um, you know, hanging alongside a building or something. That's what these are. They're actually a lot heavier than your typical highway billboard vinyl. This is the box they come in. They're all folded up neatly in there. And that box weighs 34 pounds for four vinyls. <laughs> they are very heavy. So keep that in mind if you order online. Now the bigger ones are going to be a lot bigger but not quite as heavy because of the vinyl. But still, they're heavy. Um, if you're just wanting to play with vinyl, I would recommend maybe trying to find some at a sign shop, find them locally, uh, just because the shipping is so much. I pay more for shipping than I do for vinyls, no matter how many I order, really. So, um, that's how it starts. And then I usually lay them out and let them sit in the sun because they kind of soften up a little bit. And then I flip them over and trim the sides off, which I will show you. The first thing you might notice when you turn your billboard over is that it is filthy. <laughs> like truly disgusting filthy. And it's not always apparent on the front because of um, the design and the colors. But yeah, they are filthy front and back and they have to be scrubbed clean. Uh, but I don't do that at this point. I do that after they're cut because it's much easier to manage and they clean off a lot easier in hot water. So that has to be done to every piece of vinyl that I process. And before I do that, I cut off the edge. If you look around the edge of the vinyl, you'll see that it has, it's doubled over folded over and then it's stuck down and then there are slits cut into it every so often to serve as handles. These are actually pipe sleeves and so you can put the, um, they can be strung on a pipe to pull them tight. That's how that works as far as I know. I'm just, you know, Google told me so there you go. But this is what first gave me the idea for fusing because I, I bought the vinyl just because my sister said, hey, you can buy used vinyls and they're cool. And I went, what? So I bought one just because I could. I mean, how fun is that to buy an actual billboard, right? <laughs> so I got the smallest one, the six by nine, and started playing with it just to see what it would do. And noticed on the back, the pipe sleeve and how this was stuck down. You know, the edge is folded over and stuck down. And I started trying to pull it apart and couldn't. So I got a utility knife and started cutting it apart. And as far as I could tell, I couldn't find any kind of adhesive that was holding it down. So my thought was, well, it's heat. It's got to be pressed down with heat. So I actually sent an email to my supplier and said, hey, you know, when they're... Um, making these billboards, do you know how they stick the edges down? Is it by heat? He said, yes, heat and pressure. I went, okay. So that's what made me start, um, that was the beginning of the idea to fuse the billboard vinyl, was knowing that it would stick to itself with heat and pressure. And um, I'm not going to show you that exact process because it's something that I had to figure out on my own. It's not difficult. You know, it's heat and pressure. I'm just not going to spell it out for you because um, as far as I know, we're the only people anywhere who are fusing vinyl like this. So, you know, you can figure it out, but you're going to have to do it on your own. <laughs> I will say that there is no household tool, typical household tool, that will do this. I tried it with everything in my house, craft tools, ceiling irons, they will not work. So it does take a special tool. But unfused vinyl is still fun to play with too. So the first step in this process is to take a utility knife and I just cut right along this seam 
to cut these pipe sleeves off. These folded over edges, I don't need them. I don't use them. And that is pretty much the only waste I get out of a billboard. There may be, you know, just a couple of inches here and there, but I really do use almost every square inch, except these. So that is step one. So I am taking my trusty blade here, and I just cut along the seam. and do that all the way around. Now the next step depends on what I want to do with this particular billboard. If I want to cut the whole thing into custom keepers, I have done all of the math and gridded out how to do it to get the most or the, the greatest number of keepers out of one billboard. So if I wanted to do all full-size custom keepers out of here, I just get my little reference thing and mark it off with chalk lines so that I know exactly where to cut so there's very little waste. I have two of these big 60 inch um, heavy metal rulers which come in very handy and then I use this highly specialized tool. <laughs> it is a chalk pen, it, pencil, it's like a dressmaker's marker you know that is duct taped to a broken curtain rod because <laughs> I needed something long that I could use to mark my cut lines without having to crawl around on my hands and knees. I just can't do that anymore. So this works perfectly. I have two of these actually and they come with, see they have, um, where's the, there it is. See, they're like this. You can replace the chalks. They come with a container of different chalks, and this is what I needed because sometimes I need white chalk. Sometimes I need colored. So I needed both. I like the pencil form, and this, this is just working perfectly. So this is how it comes. I think it's by Dritz. I'll try to remember to put a link. I got it on Amazon. It even comes with a little sharpener with the tiny holes so you can sharpen your little things. But this is working really well for me. So, I use my ruler, mark the grid. Now, if Jason is out here working with me, which he sometimes does on the weekends, then we use one of these chalk line things. And But it takes two people to use. I can't do it by myself. I mark where we need a line, and then we stretch this across, and you snap it, and it leaves chalk down there. And that goes a lot faster. But when it's just me, I do the marking and the drawing manually by myself. Someday we're going to have a work table big enough to do this, I hope, because <laughs> it's a pain out here in the driveway. So that's the process for marking off a whole billboard full of custom keepers. Make the chalk lines, draw the lines, cut with the utility knife. Now if I want to do um, prime cuts, that's a little different. For prime cuts, I have a little cardboard template cut for each size of custom keeper and the cut size is larger than the finished size because um, uh, you just can't cut it to exact size and then fuse it. There's always some waste on the edges so it's a little bit bigger and I have it marked with a little grid so that I can line it up just right on whatever image I'm trying to capture and then I just draw around it with chalk. So if I want her face, it needs to go like so. Well, let me see. It's hard to do with just one hand. So I would kind of line it up like that. Do like this. Check like that. And then trace around this. And that is how I cut out the prime cuts. So it's pretty... You know, not rocket science, just a cardboard piece that fits every size custom keeper. And that is all there is to it. So once I have my pieces cut, then I take them inside and I have one of those deep utility sinks in my laundry room. And I just fill it with 
hot, hot, soapy water, and I scrub the pieces down by hand. And then after they're clean, I put them in my dryer. Yeah, my clothes dryer. You can't put them in there by themselves because they just stick to the sides of the dryer. So I always, before I come out here and start cutting, I throw in a load of, I have these like rag towels, beach towels, and, and just towels that are really rags. And I throw them in the wash so that I can dry them with my vinyl. And that just helps to tumble the vinyl and keeps it from sticking to the sides of the dryer. So yeah, <laughs> that is how high tech we are here. So let me get, um, let me get some cut pieces going and then show you what happens next. I cut vinyl from three different billboards and I fused it. This was from some musician whose name escapes me. This one is from a Walking Dead billboard and this one was from the HBO show Veep. I cleaned them up, fused them, and I got three different results. There are actually four different results that I know of. And I I am not sure if it's the weight of the vinyl, the quality of the vinyl, if it's the ink that's used, if it's the UV coating they put on it, if it's a combination of all that, I don't know. But there are variations in what you get when you fuse the vinyl. So this one, when it's fused, it came out like this. It's about, you know, medium weight with a very smooth texture. And I'm not sure how much of the texture you can see, but it's just really kind of smooth. And, you know, it's, it's kind of stiff, but it, it moves. It's got some bendy to it. This one it, this is the most difficult to fuse. This is from the Walking Dead uh, billboards. And if you can see the texture on it, this one, I call it water, because it's just got kind of this, it looks like ripples in water. And it is very stiff. You may not be able to tell, but it is stiffer than this one. It just doesn't get as bendy as this one does. So, Walking Dead, very stiff and ripply. This one is from Veep, and it has this kind of a crosshatch look pattern to it. And it is much softer than those two. It's, you know, it folds nicely. It's very soft. And then the fourth one, which I didn't cut, but I have a piece, and this is not a good piece. I don't know if you're going to be able to see the texture. But it's very similar to this kind of crosshatchy one, but it's more striated. Like that. And it is extremely soft. Like you could just roll this up. Very soft after it's fused. And sometimes when I pull the billboards out of the box, I can tell that, okay, this one is going to be stiff, this one's going to be soft. Other times, I can't. These two are really hard to tell apart, and this one, I can not I can never tell when these are going to fuse really smooth like that. So, I never know. And it does affect how your Custom Keeper functions, because these softer ones, they'll sometimes, the elastics will cause them to pull on the edges. And it's just the nature of the beast, it's the, the way that it's, it fuses, you know, it's just soft that way. And a good way to combat that is to maybe collage the inside of your cover, adding uh, paper to it, stiffens it up. And that will help keep your spine from doing this when your elastics are in there. But yeah, these softer ones, it's just what they do. And hopefully we'll get to the point, you know, when I have an actual work table and can lay things out and do more precision stuff, I can reinforce the spine before I fuse it so that that won't be an issue. But we really can't do that right now, <laughs> you know, down there on the driveway floor. <laughs> so yeah, four different textures, all out of these billboards that you know you would think would be basically the same but not so much they're quite different and the the walking dead 
billboards are some of the ones that I like best as far as the designs on them, you know, the graphics and stuff. These are a beast to work with. A beast. I do not like fusing them. But y'all like them, so we'll keep going. Now the next step in the process is to grab, it's another one of these long rulers. This one's only 48 inches, but on the back I've put non-skid tape on it. It's the kind you might put on a floor, like on stairs or something. I just put non-skid tape on the back a little bit to keep it from sliding around so easily on the vinyl. Corked back rulers, yeah, that doesn't work. They slide all over the place because this vinyl is slick. But these will stay put while I'm cutting. And then I just use a cutting mat and either my same trusty utility knife, like so, or a rotary cutter, which is actually easier, but the blades are so dang expensive. The off-brand blades wobble. I've tried a couple of different of the off-brands and they wobble in there and I can't have that. So I have to use the Ulfa and oh my gosh, super expensive. We go through tons of these blades, but fortunately they're pretty cheap. So the pieces are always cut a little bit bigger than they need to be so that we can trim around them. And that's where I get the... Um, strips that I sell for y'all to use for collage or assemblage or spine supports or mosaics or whatever. So this is a full-size custom keeper which is cut out 11 and a half by 15 and its finished size will be nine and a half by 13. So that way it has about an inch all the way around to um, for me to trim off. I just start by making one straight edge and then everything else is measured off of that edge. So nine and a half. And y'all these self-healing cutting mats are great but they do get to a point in their life where they just kind of say I'll oh, screw it and they quit healing themselves. <laughs> because in several spots I have nearly cut through this thing. And you know, it's just because I'm going, I'm using the same lines over and over again because this is how we measure. And yeah, it, it's just, um, it wears these down a lot quicker than you might think. Okay, nine and a half. Line this up. Nine and a half. by 13. And it didn't matter that that slipped because my ruler did not slip. These two moved together and that's okay. This is what I can't have. Now I put this against a straight line and just chop off one end. Then, even up this edge, the bottom edge, and the side edge, and cut this off to 13. That was right, right? Nine and a half by 13? Uh, yes. So there is the finished size. And then from here, it's just a matter of, I use a corner rounder to cut off, round off the corners, and then a punch, and I use a crocodile, one of these, to punch the holes. And I have templates made up for these sizes so that I don't have to measure each one, measure the holes on each one. So round the corners, punch the holes, and cut the elastic to string it. 
and I buy the elastic in big thingies like this because it's cheaper that way. And that is all there is to it when it comes to making a custom keeper. So you can see <laughs> they are made completely by hand, very little machinery involved, and hopefully someday we can get a substrate cutter so that we can get rid of this. This is a pain. So yeah, a substrate cutter would be great someday. Industrial hole punch and corner rounder would be awesome. And you know, there's several other things that we need that could really make this process more efficient. And hopefully we'll be able to get those someday. But I just thought you might be interested in seeing how the vinyl is processed and gets turned into a custom keeper. It's definitely a labor of love, but I actually, I, I kind of enjoy doing it. This is a prototype book, and um, I'm still enjoying experimenting to see what else we can make out of these, what we can do with these, this vinyl, and I hope to someday, you know, when we get that big work table someday, be able to offer pieces of fused vinyl and unfused for y'all to use to make your own stuff to experiment with you know like eight and a half by eleven pieces or twelve by twelve cut and ready for your own experimentation i think that would be fun so that's all i hope you enjoyed um my version of how it's made i love that show <laughs> Um, for now, the end.